Hey everybody. Okay, back to a more simple video. You know what? I've tried to record this video a couple times and I'm just gonna cut out like the entire um history of quantum physics essentially and just talk about the the new context or the new uh the new understanding that I've gotten from this this lecture, this latest lecture that I've witnessed on uh on quantum physics or this talk that I've seen by uh by Philip Ball and Zlatka Minev. Uh I'll link to it in the description below, something I just watched here on YouTube. But yeah, it just added a whole new a whole new dimension to my understanding of quantum physics and basically just physics as a whole and how our world works. And I think it's very important information that should be spread. So I'm sharing. Uh, so yes, uh, basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about how I see quantum physics now and how I think it relates to the world as a whole, and uh, just skip over um, these historical problems of of quantum physics and all that. But really. I think the greatest takeaway that I got from this video is that quantum physics, the way that it that it, that it differs from classical physics, is just context. It's now a greater uh, a greater look at the context surrounding, uh, you know, the system of uh, particles in this case, right, or whatever that we're that we're observing. And it's, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm trying to understand in the world today. So, uh, whereas in classical physics, right, you can look at you can look at a ball, you know, thrown up into the air and, you know, go, all right, I'm going to measure the gravity of it, you know, falling down. I'm going to measure the time and see how that goes. Uh, not really paying attention, like the wind resistance or anything like that's happening in the air, the, the moisture in the air, uh, you know, whether or not there's other, you know, substances or particles in the air that might be affecting the ball. Those are all things that are affecting the system as a whole. But in classical physics, they just don't affect it enough. We understand those patterns of of of, um, of nature, those patterns, those systems uh, in nature, like the wind and uh, and uh, the moisture in the air and all those things, humidity. We understand those things enough to say, hey, that's not going to affect the system enough in any meaningful way that we need to pay attention to it, right? And so that's why I think that things seem a lot more concrete. We like to make things seem a lot more concrete in you know the naked the naked world that we see right now right uh the everyday world that we live in uh whereas in quantum physics there's a lot more there's a lot more uncertainty that comes to the forefront uh in understanding the small small little particles that they're observing down there right um and i think that that has a lot to do with observing a large dance through a microscopic view right like they are really witnessing like the big movements that we're that we're that we see out here the, the cosmic not even just in our, in our naked eye view of the world the cosmic movements of this world and looking at the fabric of reality and trying to go all right what is the nature of these particles down here right what is it that they're playing you know how are how are they working um how are they working without even being able to fully see the picture it's not like we can microscope the entire universe and keep it all in view right or can we uh, and I think that's where that's where the science is heading now. Whereas before, uh, the science were chiefly, you know, chiefly concerned with the scientists were chiefly concerned with the system, and they've always, you know, had the system in mind and always trying to account for what's going on in the system and what what you know what things are happening in the system. Um, but when they started trying to measure things in the quantum world, uh, their measurements started uh, causing causing things to causing things to be a certain way in the quantum world, right? Whereas if nobody was looking, uh, quantum particles would behave in a way that they didn't expect. Uh, but if they did start look, you know, looking by like having a measuring device, right, in that sort of certain extent, to where they could meaningfully say, uh, you know, that, you know, this particle was in a certain state or a certain speed or something like that, right, whenever it was passing through here, uh, they measured it in a certain way to really say something concrete about it. They had essentially decided something about that particle in doing so in their observation of, of that uh and that that was something that would just freak scientists out they were like what that's that doesn't make sense you know like how how do the particles know what we're doing you know like that's that's crazy uh and so yeah yeah it was it's it seems like what's really happening is that the small factors that we usually think are negligible in the classical world are really not negligible in 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 the uh, in the quantum world, and that's that's what makes it so so apparent this uncertainty and what what seems like random behavior, but really it's behavior that that's changing 
uh, that's ever changing with every every condition you set upon it, right? Uh, and that's just because you're so zoomed, you're so far zoomed in that uh, you are really, you know, you can think of it as like this is like going to be an over really a really oversimplified uh, example that uh, probably isn't co completely correct because it won't be, uh, you know, it's not the quantum world, but. The way I can think of it in my head is like, okay, let's let's think of like a 5K runner, right? There's two states that the runner can be in. They can be at, they can be stopped at the, at the start line or they can be stopped at the finish line, right? Um, uh, but then there's this whole in between state, right? That we like to talk about in quantum or that they like to talk about in quantum physics, where it's like, okay, we don't really know uh, if the, if the if this binary state is this or that, right? We it's this in between state, you know, we don't know if the spins up or down. Uh, it might just be somewhere in between. In the middle of the race, whenever somebody's running a 5K, they are running. They are no longer stopped at one state or the other. They're doing something. They are in action, right? And they are. You can't really say that they're that they're starting or 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 stopping. They're kind of in the middle of it, right? Uh, I think that that's essentially okay. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's like the dance of the universe, right? That's the that's the big view, but then. The quantum physicists are now zoomed in and they are now like, you know, like the water boy or water girl uh, in the middle of the race, somewhere where they can't see the, the, the start, the start line, the finish line. They don't know, you know, where, where this runner is in context of those two states. Uh, and they are the ones now handing out, you know, a new, a new piece of information now adding to the system in a certain way, giving out waters, you know. In reality, you know, in the grand scheme of the 5K, it doesn't seem like that's very much, you know, it could, it could help in a meaningful ways or it could hurt in meaningful, or meaningful ways that we don't really think about, you know. Maybe that water was just like the extra boost that they needed to just keep going and go win the race or maybe it was uh, the thing that slowed them down. They didn't actually need it and uh, it just shaved a few seconds uh, from the time that they could have had. Uh, that's, that's the reality of it, right? Uh, quantum physicists... And so that that's what's happening with quantum physicists whenever they measure, right? They they're essentially putting putting their foot into like to in the river now to change the flow so that way they can they can understand it, right? They 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 have to put in a sensor, they have to feel, they have to feel it out, they have to have some sort of um, sensory receptor, uh, and that's changing the system. That's that's adding uh, something to the system in this really small small world. That we barely understand. That we're we're just not, we're just now. Well, I don't know. We don't barely understand. That's why. That's exactly the point I'm making here. Is that we we understand it a lot more now, but uh, we we don't have like the intricate, uh, a much more intricate way of dealing with these really small particles. We are at the most intricate, right? Like we are dealing with the most intricate that we've discovered and learned about right now, right? And that we can interact with. And so it's like us trying to understand, or you know, yeah, it's like us trying to move through a crowd of people right without without moving anybody else right like say you're at a music concert you're trying to move closer to the front you know it's not like you can get through it's not like it's an easy you can avoid everybody on the way up there right like we're all the same size we're all trying to do the same thing by just being there right and so you moving through that crowd is affecting literally everyone else everyone else is affected right and there's nothing that you can do about that because there's no way like maybe if you're like a smaller person right if you're if you're a smaller man or girl that's trying to go through the uh you know the music concert maybe you have an easier time maybe you can walk through people's legs or something i don't know <laughs> and maybe in that case you're not affecting as much right but yes uh we are in the state where we are just you know we're all we're all just right you know just the same general size people in a giant crowd trying to be in the same place, do the same thing, have the same purpose and not interact with each or not interact with each other, even though you can't. So now we have to really be aware of that interaction and we have to be aware of the context that we bring to a situation, right? We are recontextualizing uh, in the same way that the water boy, water girl uh, now changes the runner's world, right? Now they've changed uh, how that runner is, you know, their state of being, what's going on, you know, maybe they even stopped there. Now they've made a whole new state. Are they start, have they started, have they stopped? It's a whole new state now. But it wouldn't have happened if the water, if the water girl, water boy wasn't there, you know? Uh, that's what I think is happening with quantum physics. And uh, it seems like that sort of thing goes away with this thing they call decoherence, right? It's, it's essentially their, 
their window for measuring uh for measuring things in the quantum world disappears very quickly right like as soon as they measure something uh there's now a level of decoherence that gets added to the situation which i like to call recontextualization right it's really just the the new situation that you brought to this particle has now taken over right and that's what they're saying too right is that like now it's uh essentially entanglement uh in quantum physics is just whenever two particles are interacting with each other they now become entangled right any interaction any interaction at all uh, has essentially entangled these particles together and so uh that's what's happening with the systems that they're measuring right they'll measure and now the particle becomes entangled with their measurement device it becomes entangled with like the with with the scientist's room you know with the scientists themselves with that whole situation it now becomes a part of that instead of the the greater dance it was a part of before right uh so in that case it's a whole recontextualization of the situation right but uh the same laws were already there the same laws were already there it's just that now now this particle is entangled with us instead of instead of the other dance right it's playing with us instead of playing with the other dance or doing its other thing right the particle is not playing with whoever else it was playing with uh before it is playing with us now and uh the rules go back to like the classical things that we expect right uh which is crazy to think about but that's so essentially what's happening is that they're finding out the quantum world is essentially how everything in this world works it's just that everything in this world is pretty well entangled and we can see those things i like to call that just the patterns that we see like the patterns that we understand you know me as a person as a pattern you know of being i you un, i under we un, i understand me people understand me I, you know just people in general are a pattern that we understand right the wind is a pattern that we understand you know plastics cardboard all you know uh wood all the other things those are things that we understand right uh whereas the quantum world's uh the quantum world is in, is uh is defining that the quantum world's defining that right and so these these relationships that happen at the quantum level uh are what grow to become the classical things that we see now uh with our naked eye and 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 you know in the celestial bodies beyond right and so that's why i wanted to give this my little uh look at uh how i see quantum physics now my thoughts on it uh how i see it because i think this knowledge is really important uh to humanity going forward like this is really important stuff i think that it adds uh credence to a lot of ideas that are out there that are very important to uh to us progressing as a society and just you know just in our ideas it's, i think it's just good ideas to circulate right and so i could talk a bit more about how i how i see this all is just part of like the vibrations and waves right well i guess that's kind of what string theory is anyway we're like well, I, I actually have no clue about string theory so i won't i won't attach to that these are just my crazy ramblings right i get to say all this stuff too because i'm, I'm just like a random philosopher boy right Instead of a scientist you, if you watch that lecture i really encourage you to go watch that lecture uh it's funny whenever you know to hear scientists talk about like what they think they're always like really carefully gotta walk on eggshells because that's not the job of the scientist right the scientist doesn't philosophize uh as Witten, as Witten guys uh Witten, wittgenstein says I'll make a video on that too but uh yeah i mean it could uh it could very well you know these quantum rules uh entanglement uh you know the idea that we can be in multiple places at once until more decisions are made right that's that's this world that's how that's how people work that is that, and the gurus have been saying it for years right they understood that as soon as they heard that they're like yeah that makes sense that makes sense um but yeah just know that you are you have relationship you are entangled with you know the the people that you meet the food that you eat you know the places that you live uh the music you listen to those are all things that are affecting you and your system and becoming a part of your entanglement, becoming part of your pattern, becoming a part of how you are and how you exist and how we see you in this classical universe. Eh? So uh, the quantum rules are important. Start learning about them. Start realizing what it means in your life. And uh, yeah, take care, everybody. I love you. I hope this was, uh, you know, at least a little bit shorter. Uh, I tried to cut it down as much as I could, but maybe I'm a bit of a rambler. So <laughs> take care. I love you guys. Goodbye.